Harry, congratulations. How does it feel to um, win a life achievement award, a career achievement award in your mid 40s? Um, yes, lower to mid 40s, please. 44 I am. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, still, uh, I'm, still, I'm still feeling it. But I feel very honored and uh, I did double check that they had the right Williams. I mean, you know, there's John. <laughs> There's my brother. He's carving it up in Hollywood at the moment. No, but uh, in all seriousness, I'm very grateful and I feel very fortunate. And can you talk for a second about what role BMI has played in your career? Well, they've been very supportive and, uh, you know, watched out for me um, at critical moments in my career. And, uh, and one, of my, uh, one of my first memories of feeling maybe I actually belong here was two or three years into uh, my stay here, which would be about seven or eight years ago now. I remember having lunch with Doreen Ringeross, and uh, I, th I was a member of PRS at the time. Um, by the end of the crab cakes, I wasn't. <laughs> but, you know, t um, I've always felt that um, looked out for. Um, yeah. It, it, it's interesting to me that now that we're in the 21st century, you sort of personify the kind of composer who's going to have a big career in films. And, and it's because I think you go beyond the straight orchestral score. You've incorporated world music influences, you're from, you know how to deal with rock and roll. How, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, you know, um, I, th I think all that's very down to my great fortune of having worked on a variety of films. You know, the, um, you know Tony Scott brings something to me almost every year now that, that is, is, is a very specific thing to work on. You know, and uh, I've been very fortunate with my, my um, relationship with Jeffrey Katzenberg at DreamWorks. And so with, with this sort of plethora of films and the variety um, that, that, that's been thrown up, you know, it's given me an opportunity to experiment. And, and uh, I wouldn't necessarily, I'm sure I wouldn't, uh, if, I, if I hadn't embarked on this, this journey that I'm on, I, I wouldn't, have, uh, wouldn't really have dreamed of writing music like, for instance, I wrote for Man on Fire or, or for Spy Game or for Shrek or, or anything really. So yeah, it's, it's been very wonderful. What are you working on currently? Um, I've just finished a wonderful a small budget movie for Icon Entertainment called Seraphim Falls. And it's a Western. Well, there you go. I never thought I'd do a Western. Why did I think I would do a Western? I'm an Englishman, for goodness sake. But what fun. Fantastic. Really great with Liam Neeson and Pierce Brosnan in it. Super film. And do you have other things coming up? I certainly do, yes. Tony's making another film. He's just um, in post-production. No, about to be in post-production. I'm going to be working on Joel Schumacher's movie, The Number 23, with a Jim Carrey, a very dark, rather twisted piece, obsessive piece, um, and uh, uh, an animation called Flushed Away for, for DreamWorks. And around the corner is Shrek 3. Well, actually, Shrek, Shrek, Shrek the Third, it's called. Yeah, Great. there you go. Great. If you um, had any advice to give to composers who want to get into film or uh, drama in general, what would it be? Well, from my own experience, um, which clearly has been one of, of great fortune, um, I, uh, the reason I'm standing here now is because of um, the, the fig leaf that was held out to me by Hans Zimmer. And it was a chance meeting I had with Hans, and I'd, I'd never even really thought about film music. I was involved in film music for, uh, in music all my life, but not, not film music. And I met with him, and um, he offered me a... Uh, he called it a studio. I would call it a closet. <laughs> Um, at Media Ventures some 10 something years ago and said look come on give it give it a go I think you can do this um, and to work wi with a fantastically uh, successful and confident composer as yeah making the tea sometimes maybe orchestrating a cue if you're lucky maybe ghosting a cue but not to have the full responsibility of scoring a you know a huge Hollywood film but to be in the in the throng of it but not to have to be the full guy you know, to be able to observe, to be able to take an opportunity if it came, which is what I did. And, uh, you know, I have uh, young assistants myself now, and, uh, you know, I'm mindful of, of that. I think, think it's probably the only way. I can't imagine, well, I, I, guess, I guess Hollywood might come knocking on your door if you're, you're full of promise and talent. But, but my way, um, which I, I know others before me and, and others after will, will look at, is, was, was more... Um, to, to come into the, the scenario of what's going on, but not, not expecting to be the lead composer or anything like this, but to, to get involved on that level. And that was really brilliant for me, and, and I, I take it very seriously. One last question, and that is, how do you balance the business side of movie making with the creative side? I don't very well. <laughs> I, I honestly don't very well. I'd like to know, if you, if, if, if you know, 
anybody who's good at that, they should speak to me. No, seriously, I... I uh, yes, it's always been a bit of a mystery to me. I'm not... Anybody who knows me knows that um, uh, business and me really aren't a match made in heaven. So how do you handle it? Do you focus on the creative side as much as possible? Yeah, I mean, totally. To the exclusion of business, which is, I'm sure is not the right way to do it. But uh, yes, I, I've, I've made some appalling business decisions in my illustrious career. But uh, no, I, I, uh, yeah, I'm the wrong person to ask about that. Great. Th Harry, thank you and congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you.